I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about your mitochondria. And if you understand this, it doesn't matter what age you're at. You may be a senior citizen, you may be a teenager, a kid, a young adult, but we need to go back to biology class and understand mitochondria because everything in your life revolves around your cells. You were born from a single cell and you multiplied into trillions and trillions of cells. Your hair, you have hair fall, think about your cellular health. You have a problem with your skin, your hair, your eyes, your teeth, your whatever it is, your organs, your kidney, your heart, cancers, every disease you think about it from a cell. Every disease is born from a cell, which means the root cause of any problem that we have to do with our health starts from a cell. But we're focusing on everything but the cell. We're focusing on creams and pills and medications. I have nothing against medications, but if you think medications is gonna address the root cause of your problem, you're highly mistaken about that. It's only gonna treat the symptom, which is why we use medicine as a crutch. But today, if you're looking at preventing disease, today if you're looking at healing yourself, the first thing you think is your cell. Cellular energy, cellular health. Today, people are trying to get energy from different sources, from Red Bulls, more caffeine, more coffees, more teas, more sugar, more carbs, all of that stuff. We forget that our cells have the ability to generate its own energy. And usually the amount of energy that your cells generate is enough. It has like the power, each cell has the power of like a small battery, which means it can even light up a, a bulb. That's the amount of energy that we generate. And that's enough to take us through an entire day, through you know whatever we're doing, our activity, whatever else we're doing, even our brain power. We have enough of cellular energy, but where is all that cellular energy? Most of us don't have it because we've compromised it by the food that we eat, sleep deprivation, sedentary lifestyles, and all too much of stress in your body. So today we're gonna to understand how the mitochondria works because then everything that you do, now every decision you make will revolve around, is this good for my cells? Uh, is this decision that I'm about to make good for my mitochondria? So what's the simplest way I can explain a mitochondria to you? I could go on talking on this subject for hours, but we're gonna to try to make it as simple as we can. So when you think of mitochondria of your cells, think of them as little factories in each of your cells. We have trillions of cells. Each of these cells have little factories. These factories are called your mitochondria. In each of these, there are like 18 to 20,000, think of them as chemical assembly lines that are constantly taking the nutrients from the food that we eat the oxygen from the air that we breathe. Your mitochondria takes this raw material, the nutrients from the food that you eat and the oxygen from the air that we breathe. And it breaks it down into a molecule of energy called ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate. Without ATP, we cannot live. We will not have the energy to do anything. Our immune system can't function. Our hair will start to fall. We'll be fatigued. We basically can't live. Our organs will not be able to survive without this energy source. So the currency of energy in, your, in the human body is ATP. If you have less ADP, you have all the possible sicknesses that we mentioned in the post from cardiovascular to Alzheimer's to Parkinson's to cancers to diabetes to any possible thing because without the right energy, the body weakens. A weak body is susceptible to anything. Viruses, bacteria, all of these things express themselves in our bodies more efficiently when we don't have a strong immune system. Where does the power of the immune system come from? Our mitochondria from the source called energy. Everything in this world works on energy. There's energy in this pen, there's energy in the air around you, there's energy that's created between two people who don't even say a word to each other. Have you ever walked into a room and all of a sudden you don't even know the people there but you sense a very negative energy? No one said anything, you don't know anyone, energy is real and you can see a person and just feel that you wanna be close to that person without even knowing them because they have a very positive energy. So energy is everything including your cells. But human beings have become great at compromising our own cellular energy which is why we have more problems today. So coming back to the mitochondria, we eat a meal, we breathe well. Our cells, the mitochondria, will take the nutrients and the oxygen, break it down into ATP. Now, again in science, whenever you break down something to energy, there's always a byproduct. The byproduct of, of ATP is water, carbon dioxide, and free radicals. Now this is perfect. Our body, we can exhale the carbon dioxide, the free radicals connect with our tissues to fight certain amount of infections and water is basically taken care of. Now the problem is, if our mitochondria have to work too hard, too hard to create ATP, the amount of waste that we just spoke about, the byproducts also increase. So now let's take it for example, I was at a medical convention the other day and I was trying to explain to doctors why we cannot tell people it is okay to eat anything, especially when you're sick. 
Now, let's say we're eating junk food. We're eating a lot of pizzas and carbs and white flour and white sugar. Okay, your mitochondria will spend a lot of time trying to break that down because it's searching for nutrients. All the junk food that we spoke about has zero nutrients. So in its process of constantly trying to break down the junk food that you eat, what's increasing in your body? Carbon dioxide, water, and free radicals. Now, here's a huge problem. Have you ever had junk food or a heavy meal and felt tired and sleepy and you can't focus? That's because you have more carbon dioxide in your body. Carbon dioxide makes us feel sluggish and sleepy and low and drowsy. You can try a simple experiment after this. Take a deep breath, hold your breath as long as you can. Keep the carbon dioxide in as long as you can. The moment you release it, you're going to feel drowsy and sleepy. So you see fatigue caused by the wrong foods, overeating, junk food is happening at a cellular level in our system, which is why a sick patient or a healthy person who is eating junk food, especially when you're sick and the body needs energy to help you to recover. We don't get that energy, but we get more carbon dioxide, which makes us more drowsy and weaker, more water. The worst part of it is we get more free radicals. Like I said, free radicals in a small quantity is great for us, but the more free radicals that we have, what does it lead to? The number one word which should be on everyone's mind, inflammation. Inflammation, you think of cancer, inflammatory disease, diabetes, inflammatory disease, obesity, inflammatory metabolic condition. All of these are inflammatory conditions and we are increasing inflammation in our body by making our mitochondria work too hard, which is why the food that you eat can be medicine or it can be destructive to trillions of cells in the human body. So most of us are producing our own inflammation because we're making the mitochondria work way too hard which is why when a patient is sick, especially going through cancer, chemotherapies, radiation, which is anyway destroying these little energy factories in the cells, the last thing that you wanna do is make your body break down white sugar and flour and ice creams and all the other crap food that most doctors tell their patients to go and enjoy. So you see, you're keeping yourself in a cycle of sickness. Worse, you're actually making yourself sicker. You're actually making yourself sicker because your energy factories are unable to do the right work job. Number one, number two, you're adding more inflammation in a body which is already sick because of inflammation. And this explains most people's questions to chronic disease. Why are people stuck in chronic disease? Why aren't people getting better? They're taking medicine, they're doing treatments, they're doing everything, but they're stuck in chronic disease because we put ourselves into a chronic cycle of inflammation, carbon dioxide, excess in the body, low energy levels, fatigue. So then because we're fatigued, we start eating on more carbs, more sugar, more aerated drinks, thinking it's gonna give us more energy, but we put ourselves into a vicious cycle of destruction. So that's the first thing. What else affects our mitochondria? too much of exposure to the sunlight at the wrong time. Sunlight at the right time is great for us. At the wrong time, it is damaging our DNA. Now your cell, you have a cell nuclei. The cell nuclei has communication with your mitochondria. Everything in the human body works on communication, like in a relationship. So you have a good relationship, you find communication is great. When there's a breakdown in communication in a relationship, the relationship falls apart. The same thing as your cell. There's a beautiful relationship between the cell nuclei and the mitochondria. When this communication breaks, we start having something called mitochondrial dysfunction and every possible issue with damage in your DNA, the stem cells, so everything gets affected. Now the beauty is, and the, the biggest thing that happens when the communication uh, breaks, we start aging rapidly. Have you seen some people in their 20s, they look like they're in their 40s. Have you seen some people in their 50s, they look like they're in their 30s. So aging, you can buy creams and pills and all of this stuff, but if you have mitochondrial dysfunction, you are gonna age way before your time. So the fountain of youth is in your cells and what you do to manage your cells. There is no magic cream and women and men can go on applying all these creams. All you're doing is just fooling yourself thinking it's making you more beautiful. You want an inner glow, you wanna age as you're meant to age, you look after your cells. There is no other way, there is absolutely no other secret. The fountain of youth is within your cells. So coming back to that, your exposure of sun can break this communication. Exposure to tobacco, people who chew tobacco, people who smoke it, passive smokers. When this smoke gets into your system, your mitochondria works in overdrive. Your lungs work in overdrive. The communication between your cell nuclei and your mitochondria breaks down. So you will see people rapidly aging. You can have all the organic food in the world, but if you are putting toxins in your system that affect your mitochondria, you have a big problem. 
Let's take, and of course, heavy drugs like chemotherapy, radiation, certain heavy medications, which is why when we tell, we keep telling you, if you're going on medication and you have to take it, take it. But parallelly, you need to make changes in your lifestyle to look after your mitochondria. The more heavy the treatment, the more lifestyle changes and the more correct nutrition you need to put into your cells to help out with your mitochondrial function. Children who are born with autism, <clears throat> Children who are born with motor skill issues, sensory skill issues, and all of that stuff, they have mitochondrial dysfunction. It's because they have mitochondrial dysfunction, most of them have these problems. So it is so important for a woman going through pregnancy to understand those nine months and probably the one year before those nine months are so important for you. So women who are heavy smokers but decide to stop smoking just before pregnancy, there are chances that you already have mitochondrial dysfunction. So that's why we're asking people to take it easy on your lifestyle. You're planning a child, it goes back just not just just not the nine months, but even a year before that, you want to start being a little bit careful if you're planning your child. Now coming to diabetics, because again, it's a problem of mitochondrial dysfunction. People who are unable to produce insulin, your pancreas are so overworked, so overworked that the mitochondria cannot even generate the right amount of ATP to maintain a healthy cell. So your cells stop to produce insulin. In cases of insulin resistance, your cells, the membranes are so damaged because of the free radicals that they can no longer open up and communicate with insulin. And that's why you have more blood sugar in your blood and your levels are going higher and higher. Let's get straight into solution mode. The solution mode is very simple. Like I said, simplicity is the new cool. We don't need complication. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, lentils, legumes, and whole grains. This is a balanced diet. This is what your cells need. When you decide to go on to extreme diets, like, like certain people may need keto, certain people may need low carb, but when you go on to these diets and you deprive yourself of these macronutrients, you may get fantastic weight loss, all the good comments on social media about how you're looking, but you are now creating mitochondrial dysfunction because you don't even have the basic vitamins and minerals and the macro and micronutrients that your cells need to maintain energy supply, ATP. It's as simple as that. So there is no shortcut. My question to people is for the longest time, the greatest bodies have been built. The best weights have been maintained with a balanced diet. I don't understand why the world today is pushing people into extremes. We don't need to take extreme measures to maintain a healthy body. Like I said, the best bodies, the fittest people, they're not doing any extreme diets. They are eating in balance and maintaining their exercise, sleep and their stress levels. So no shortcuts can, shortcuts can work. And today the amount of sickness we see with people on fat diets, be it cancers, be it diabetes. In fact, when they come, I say your diet is supposed to make you healthier. But here you are sitting in front of us with a kidney problem, a liver problem, a fatty liver, a non-alcoholic fatty liver because of your extreme diet. So the first step towards building mitochondrial health is your cells are looking for the vitamins, minerals, and dietary fiber found in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, and whole grains. That takes you back to a balanced staple meal. Number two, omega-3. Whether it's your fish oil, if you're non-vegetarian, if you're vegetarian, your flax seeds, your walnuts, your cell membranes, your mitochondria needs omega-3, which you will not find in most of your fat diets. Third is your dietary fiber. We need fiber, not too much, not too little. If we're eating a balanced diet, we get the right amount of fiber. Again, from where? Our fruits, our vegetables, our nuts, our seeds, our whole grains, our legumes, and our lentils. We don't have to go too much fiber. Too much fiber will irritate our gut and cause bigger problems. Then the next thing is high interval training. You know, there are a lot of people who's trained in the gym for one hour, two hours, whatever your goal is. But if you want it for your mitochondria, because remember one thing, your mitochondria are found in tissues that demand the most energy in the body. It makes sense if my brain, my brain, my heart and my muscles need the most energy, ATP. So you'll find more mitochondria in the tissue, in the cells that demand the most energy. So we find it in our heart and most heart patients who don't work out, that's why they get sicker and they die because they don't have enough of mitochondria in their own heart muscles to prevent a cardiac arrest or a heart disease, which is why we say sedentary is the new cigarettes. Sedentary will kill you. Your brain function, your heart function, your diabetes. We need constant circulation. So these muscles have the heart muscles, the brain and your body muscles have the most mitochondria and these mitochondria needs raw material, oxygen, food. So if you're not giving it the right food, you're not breathing the right way, these muscles start to die. And that's what we see in Alzheimer's, 
Parkinson's, the brain issues, heart, everything to do with the heart. And we start seeing people with weak muscles and all of that stuff. So a person who's carrying a lot of body fat will never be energetic. They'll be low on energy because their mitochondria is lower. But people who are more lean, slightly muscular, fit, they have more mitochondria, which means they have more ATP, which means they have more energy. It's as simple as that. So strength training, weight training, high interval training is great for developing and looking after your mitochondria. We spoke about sugar, flour, junk food, ultra processed. The easy, easiest way to mess up your kid's life is by allowing them to eat all of these things uncontrolled. Likewise, your life and your parents' life. Okay, we need to understand that sugar, flour, junk food is not designed for any cell in the human body. It is not designed for a cell in the human body. It is designed for money. It is designed to excite your brain and get you addicted, period. That is how it is. So the more junk you feed yourself, the more disease you are creating, the more fatigue you are creating. We spoke about a sedentary life being the worst thing for your mitochondria. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, radish. These are great, great vegetables for your mitochondria. Sleep. You have sleep deprivation. Your mitochondria cannot recover. They cannot work. Factories need rest. Workers and factories need rest in order for the factory to work the right way. These little factories need rest. So sleep deprivation will upset it. A lot of people <clears throat> make something called bone broth. Bone broth is where you boil, you know, mutton, chicken with the bones and vegetables. And that's rich in glutamine, amino acids that is fantastic for your mitochondria. So if you're non-vegetarian, bone broths are absolutely fantastic for your mitochondria. And of course, people who are on statins, and that's why we say statins are the worst thing for you. And today science is proving that statins are the worst things for your mitochondria. And that's why people on statins go through muscular pains, body aches and all of that stuff because it creates mitochondrial dysfunction. It upsets the complete working of your ATP and your mitochondria. So please work very hard with your doctors, make lifestyle changes, get your cholesterol in place so that your doctor and you can work towards getting off your statin. If you are on a statin, make sure that you're taking a selenium and a CoQ10 enzyme. You need this to help you with the mitochondrial dysfunction so that the statin alone doesn't destroy your health. So most, most of the supplements that work brilliantly for mitochondria, in case you have a mitochondrial dysfunction, of course take professional help, are things like alpha lipoic acid because you have too many free radicals. And acetylcysteine to basically boost glutathione, which is great for your mitochondria. You have resveratrol, which you can also find in normal foods. You have magnesium, extremely, extremely important for you. <coughs> and you have L-carnitine and several other supplements, which you should take professional help to get it. This is it in short, mitochondrial health. Everything to do with your health, everything to do with your mood, your emotions and everything. <coughs> starts from the mitochondria and it is up to you. Everything that I mentioned for your mitochondrial health is free, but things which are free are never valued. We look for camp complication. If you can give your body and cells what it needs, your body is designed to look after you. So now anyone going through sickness, anyone looking at prevention of sickness, you look first at your mitochondrial health. Am I doing anything in my life that is destroying my mitochondrial health? You have a big problem. <clears throat> Another thing that destroys your mitochondrial health is refined oil. So you want to make sure that you're moving to cold pressed oils, pure ghee and all of that stuff because refined oils are again not designed for human consumption. As simple as that. It is creating inflammation in your cells. So as I said, what are the biggest problems we have in this world today? Inflammation, inflammatory conditions. So make sure that you start looking after your mitochondria. It's the simple things that work in life. You give your body what it needs. Your body has the intelligence to look after you. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.